Okay. So. St stupid project of the day. We're going to turn this abandoned grill that we found on the side of the road into a forge. I've seen a video like this on YouTube already, but, uh, you know, whatever. We'll see what we can do. It's not in bad shape. It's missing a few things. It won't light for gas. So, and it was free. So we'll see what we can do. I think the first thing we got to do is stabilize the base. This thing's all wangly dangly. Put another piece down here on the bottom. Keep the legs spread out right. That's what you like with their legs spread. No, well, fix that there broken handle. And off we go. So, I got a few projects kicking around. To show you a couple things in the garage. Maybe you'll be interested. I know at least two people I can get to subscribe. So, hell with it. Here we go. The shop, the saws, the sanders. This lathe is definitely going to be a project I got to get into. Bought this thing off of Craigslist. It's a beautiful little lathe. You can see. A little rust on the gears. Nothing a little polish on it won't fix. It's got kind of a aftermarket tool. Get that set up. Maybe that'll be a video. This was uh, last week's crazy project. Made that out of a piece of... You can see down there on the floor. Train rail that I horked from the scrap pile over at the switchyard. It's alright. It's not very hard. Let's see. Get in shot there. Kind of flat, and you can see, I don't know if you can see it on the video, but it marks the surface. Need to get some weld cladding on there, or weld a steel plate on there, or something. But it'll, it'll do to start. It's not too bad. Held it in with the spikes. Laid it down with some chain. Should do just fine. It's pretty heavy. It's reasonably stable, so we'll be all right with it. Another found dead on the side of the road, air compressor. That's going to get put together with, uh, I got a shot bottle over there. It used to be a fireman's tank. So that'll end up being a project, put that all together. There's a half dead welder under there, that's a project. And as you can see, there's plenty of shop organizational type things that need to get done around here. But we got some tools. We could do some things. Let's see what we can get going. Maybe there's the, the glory station, the power bench. five Makita tools that you have to buy to get an extra battery. Ridiculous. So there we go. Took the handle off. Gutted it. Started scraping it out. And I just wanted to share with y'all. Free. Came with it. It was inside it. absolutely perfect I don't understand why people throw stuff away hey listen it was free there we go couple of spacers keep those legs spread wide actually not quite this one's about 14 inches this one down here and this one up here is just a little bit bigger than that. But hey, I didn't make the thing. So, and before anyone accuses me of uh, 
trying to polish a turd. Not that anybody would, I don't think, with this material, but all this wood came from a piece of old cabinet that I took apart and already used to do trim inside the house. And on it came this lovely little hinge handle thing. So we'll probably stick that on there somewhere to replace our broken. All scrap, all recycled. All right. Here's what I'm working with. It's crap I got left laying around. This piece is a uh, piece of sanitation tubing. I think this is an inch and a quarter inch. No, one inch. See, right there, one inch. So, someone's obviously tried to get these apart before. Maybe we'll get them apart, but. hole here maybe I can put that down through there cement it in place and we can cement that together somehow and that'll give me the drop tube and the for the ash and We'll see if that works. All right, you can kind of see how we're gonna go now. I drilled a few holes on the side of the pipe. Just stuck some wire through. And just hold it in place there until we get the cement in. The wire actually came off the end of that wire frame, which is from a political sign that I yanked from somebody's yard. I mean, my yard, you know, whatever. Uh, so it's going to be center air. So there'll be a hot spot in the middle, which is good because it's going to be a coal forge, not a gas forge. You might think you want to use something like this, which is this nice, already got holes in it for nice and long, kind of looks like a sword tweeyer. But no, that's not how it works. What we're going to do is, we're going to have a hot spot in the center that you can rake the coals into the hot spot. And that way you don't use so much coal. But the box itself will be, we'll have cutouts along the edge here. So you can stick a long piece through, but you just heat it where you're going to work it. You don't waste a bunch of coal. So that's how that's going to go. Alright, next phase. You can see we got the fire brick fitted in. Still haven't spent a dollar. The fire brick I got uh, when one of the neighbor's previous tenants moved out and they left a old fire pit in the back with a bunch of these bricks. And it was kind of a mess, full of burned textbooks and a bunch of other garbage. So, after the tenant moved out, I went and cleaned it up and stacked the bricks up on a pallet and I've been saving them ever since. You can see I cut these guys in half. Like that. Just cut the line with a grinder and then hit them with a chisel. Come right apart. The longer cut was a little harder. But doesn't matter, it's all going back in with mortar and cement. We'll put a little grid over the uh, top here. Make a little trough out of that. Perfect. So, let me finish up the tuyere. I want to get the pipe so it lays kind of. <laughs> Sort of goes in there like that, it'll lay on the side of the thing. And we can hook a we can use these this mounting hardware and we can <clears throat> hook our shop vac or our hair dryer or whatever right up to there. Probably just gonna cut a square hole with the grinder and fit that in and then mud it up with the uh 
the same foundry mix that I use for the for the inside of the box. Not that it has to be foundry mix. I could use JB Weld or anything like that because this part doesn't get hot. But might as well do it cheap and easy while I'm here, right? So I got, uh, I don't really have any clay, but I had a bag of tube sand sitting around and that, uh, that, that package of mortar left over from another job. Uh, I heard people say you can use plaster of Paris. That probably kicks over a little fast for me. You're supposed to use cement, sand, and clay to make stucco, basically. And that's your foundry mix. But I think I'm just going to end up using sand and cement, the mortar, and we'll see how that goes. All right. Okay, so there she's all done. You can see I went with uh, the sun. <laughs> Just drilled a hole in the uh, side of the frame there, stuck her through. Ended up using a piece of the tubing that I cut off the end here, one of the handles, to make a little slip fit joint. Uh, I started just this this piece of pipe isn't quite long enough to get so that that square looks nice So I basically just extended it with a little piece of pipe Cut the hole in and you can see down here on the bottom We've got a little Vent blocker And that's made from that same piece of tubing Just cut a piece hammered it flat And uh, the pipe I just cut and left a little tab and then bent it over First two forming operations on the new anvil. So, just cold work the, the metal. No big deal. Alright, so now we're moving on. I think we're almost ready for uh, cement. All right, it's not the end of the world. We got this stuff. We'll uh, mix up some goo. We're gonna put it on that joint there and that giant. Should have known better than to try and go after cast aluminum with a uh, sawzall, but there you go. All right, I'm probably gonna have to put the camera down to mix this. See you in a second. We got some of it spread on here. I was trying to record while I was doing it. We'll get this all spread all the way around and evened out, looking nice. This is waterproof, set underwater epoxy, but it doesn't matter. Like I said, this part doesn't get hot, theoretically. We just added some tape over the epoxy, some paper tape. You're gonna see, I like paper mache a lot. <laughs> You'll see more of that. So we're back on track. And over here I got... So you don't even really need bricks or mortar or any of that stuff. You're not supposed to use cement, according to my extensive research on YouTube and uh, so what I got here is this is ash that I dug out of my fire pit and screened and underneath here you can see it's just some good old-fashioned dirt which in this part of the world just so happens to be about 50 to 60 percent clay 
and some balance of sand is mostly what we got here so that's the other thing I did some research on I was gonna hunt around for some clay maybe go get some clay but turns out most of what we got in the backyard is half clay anyway so we just get rid of the uh, occasional bit of organic material roots and earthworms save the earthworms uh, like I said I, I screened it on a big mesh screen and then on a piece of house screen sorry about the train you're gonna hear a lot of that in these videos so uh, we're gonna just mix that with a tiny bit of a little bit of that mortar and so we can make uh, a uh, drop of water but not much because it's already kind of damp uh, like maybe a cup of water and then we're gonna pound it all into place and put the bricks in and try not to get carried away with this POS moving on all right this thing it's amazing what you find out when you read the directions this stuff says one pint of water for 10 pounds so we're gonna use about quarter to uh, about a third of a bag there uh, and I think I'm just going to mix that around a lot first dry break up all the mortar chunks And then we'll add the water. Yeah, see, it's already. Let me do that again. Grab some. You can see it's already starting to. Really doesn't need much water to hold together. There's enough dampness in the sand and the ash already because the fire pit's outside and the dirt, of course, is from the ground. So. This is pretty decently mixed. So now we'll start with about half of this. Then, mix it up good. All right, I added one more cup of water. You can see kind of from the gloves, maybe you can see, yeah, you can kind of tell. It's damp, but not wet, and when you, you squeeze it, makes a nice chunk. So we just keep breaking up the pieces, mixing it around, and it's starting to look good. And then we'll just start laying it in. You know, in about four hours. Well, we're all out of mortar. Gonna have to make another batch. See, I need to fill in. And, but the firebox is starting to look all right, I guess. Let's see if it works. You can't really tell. It's hard to tell from the thing. The, uh, the firebox has an angle that goes down like that into that into that corner. And it's been tamped over and over. We'll blow it out after it sets. But this deep part below the inlet is supposed to be a deoxygenated zone. Well, still lots of invertebrates coming out. <laughs> Thank you.
putting everything away for the night. It's supposed to rain tonight, maybe tomorrow. So we don't want everything to get wet. I'll show you this. Nice. I made that fire last night. That's what I dug out of the bottom. And then that's what we made in the fire. It's pretty good. Breaks. Two hands. And it's just a paint can with some holes in the bottom of it. And you can see beautiful charcoal. And it's completely burned through. So it's so about two days later, we had some rain, turned out to be a beautiful day. You can see it's mostly not dried and things are not stuck together terribly well. We'll see how they go when they get heat, but I'm ready to add the next layer. So. Get on with it. This is a mix of uh, more than half sand and just mortar. I'm trying to get something that'll stick and conform to the surfaces a little bit. See it's a little wetter than before, so we can get it to flow into some of these spaces between the bricks. And I've actually used cement on forage projects before, so I know they say it can hold water pockets and potentially explode when you heat the forge, but in my experience, if you take your time heating it up, you let it cure good, and then once you put the fire in it, you don't start blasting right away. You can get along just fine with concrete. So I'm not worried, but I'd like to fill in all these spaces and get a nice smooth transition here so so I have most of the concrete that I want in here laid in now I'm just kind of Smoothing everything out, and uh, I find that if you just pat on the concrete like that, you can kind of flatten everything out, and it makes the water come to the surface and makes everything nice and smooth, gets the concrete all settled down. Like I said, this is mostly sand. It's about 60, 40 sand and mortar. Just enough mortar to hold it all together and just enough water to make it want to stick. It's more water than I used with the first batch, but that first batch was rammed in underneath. 
haven't had a lot of support. This batch is more for the, the sides and smoothing everything out, so I wanted something that I could shape a little better. So I used it just a little bit more water than I did before. Hopefully you can see down in here, things are starting to get smoothed out and there is that little dip. It's, it's about all my fingers deep there and you can see here it's much shallower. So I just clean the, the uh, hole out here. And now the, uh, the crossbars here are nicely cemented in. I can just keep adding a little reinforcement around the hole. That's probably the last little bit I have to do here. Kind of build this up into a lip. Let's see if we can. And look, the people have been making forges for thousands of years, and the first forges were whole, literally holes in the ground. You don't need to use a lot of fancy materials. You do need to worry about stuff like if the concrete's going to explode. But like I said, we're going to heat it nice and gently. And if it cracks, it cracks. Like I said, this is the 100% free, made it with crap I had laying around in the garage forge. So we're not going to get too carried away and we're not going to get too worried about it. We're just going to try and make something that we can have a little fun with. It's not like we're starting a blacksmithing business here. We just want to be able to get some metal hot and bang around. It's a little much there. But see now when I come back in and start packing this down all around, if I just tap it a little, I get a much nicer, smoother surface as the sand and the mortar all settle down and the water can rise to the, the top there. And there we have a nice deep hole. I'm not sure you can see it on this side. But on this side you can see the the hole on either side of the tuyere is nice and deep so that you can put steel down in there and it's a it'll be a reducing flame where you can soften stuff up easily because there's no oxygen in that environment and it'll if you want to decrease your carbon content can do that. And that's how you take cast iron and turn it into steel, is you add carbon. It's been a rainy few days. Even though it's been in the garage, it still doesn't look 100% dry. You only live once. I have consulted the internet, gotten all the best safety advice. I got my mom on speed dial, about to engage my safety squints. Just a few, few pieces of uh, cut off scrap lumber I hacked up. Down at the bottom there as a copy of my son's health bill, like a good socialist. See if we can get this thing going in the wind. Hang on.
All right, I just threw on some more scrap. It's crackling right along. I'm surprised how damp that wood is. It's all been in the shop, in a box, chopped up for God knows how long. But it's still pretty crackly. Forge is drawing nice from that uh, the bottom hole. No problem getting air. I don't know, I think we should load it up. There we go. What could possibly go wrong? All right, I think my goal here is to expand the fire out to either side. You can see it's already kind of dried out the whatever surface moisture was there. No signs of cracking or spalling yet. So I think I'm just gonna keep adding wood until we got the whole thing full. Smokes a little at first, but as soon as whatever's in there burns off, it's fine. Little tiny crack starting right there between the brick and the mortar. Completely temporary, of course. You ready for this? It's probably way too much air, even with the gate open. But I call that a success. Let's, uh, let's see if we can get some stuff hot. Get that on the side there. Definitely burning my knuckles from three feet away. Hope it'll melt the camera. That's 
way too much air. Let's see what we can do about that. It's about two minutes or less. I'm gonna go ahead and call that a success. That's red hot steel. And I'm not seeing any damage. Whew, that's hot. Those coals are cooking along now. So there you have it. Completely free. All parts found, scavenged, left over. And we can heat steel. Cool. See you next time.